Well, we're here today with an old friend of ours, Jeff Symbiata, the executive director of the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Jeff, it's great to great to see you again. It's great to see you, Tim. It's, it's just uh, you and I have had some good times over the years. We have. Yeah. Talk a little bit about I know that the Gildan New Mexico Bowl has a big anniversary coming up this year. Talk a little bit about it. Ten that. years. Yeah, well, this is our 10th annual Gildan New Mexico Bowl, and uh, you start to think back on it, and it can't be. And as we've been putting some of the materials together and going over some of the, the old photos and the games, it's like, oh, my goodness. All the, I mean, it just seems like a couple years ago we started this thing, and uh, people said to me, well, what are you going to do when, when the bowl goes away? You're going back into TV? And I'm like, what do you mean when the bowl goes away? I mean, I, I might have been the only person in that town, let alone beyond that town, stupid enough to think that this thing had longevity and had lasting power. but. I think we, well, I know. I, I mean, we've established ourselves at this point as, as being um, not just, you know, a bowl game that's here to stay, but a bowl game that people want to be at, want to go to and have fun. And I think, you know, hopefully, and, and uh, you know, a lot of the Wyoming people should be able to attest to this, the way we treat people is why I think we're here. And, and, and you know, as Tim, I've said a lot of times, we can't control always the matchups, can't control the weather, but take care of what we can control. How do we take care of the people who are coming into to our town and, and, and our guests? And hopefully that's part of why we've been here for going on 10 years and many, many more. Well, I know our team's had great experiences there in 2009, 2011. Yeah. I know you've got kind of an ad campaign going on later yeah. this year to, to promote the 10th anniversary, and, and one of the former great Cowboys who played in that game is going to be part of that yeah, ad campaign. Yeah, Mitch Unrein was was uh, wonderful and kind enough to cut some video for us, and uh, he'll be featured. We're, we're, we brought back just a few players from, from past games and a few coaches from past games and just to kind of tell their stories and how they remember the game over the years, and that's it's going to be celebrating 10 years of bowl memories in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he talked about the goal line stand. You, kinda, you could see his face light up about, hey, you know, I remember when we stopped Ryan Matthews four times at the goal line, and, and just to watch his face light up, that's kind of why. Somebody just asked me a little while ago, you know, what do you say to people that say there's too many bowl games? I said, you're out of your mind. I said, just don't watch then, but people are watching in record numbers, and, and the memories like that that last a lifetime are being created, and it was just to watch him all these years later, his face light up on the video was really cool. You know, another thing I know through the years, you have some great memories yeah. through the years oh, yeah. of, of the Gildan New Mexico Bulls. Share some of those with us, Jeff. Well, I mean, Tim, we've had great games. Like, like you know, the game that you guys played in, was it 09? Uh, that the double overtime game against Fresno State. We've had uh, you know, the Washington State, Colorado State game where, you know, Rams came back and scored 18 points in the last two and a half minutes there before that. Arizona scored two touchdowns in the final minutes. But my favorite moment honestly is, is, is it's a Wyoming moment it's Wyoming fans and it was right after in the overtime because why y'all came back kicked a field goal to go put the game in overtime and in the top of the first overtime you stop Ryan Matthews four times at the goal line come off people are going nuts it's crazy and I don't know if you recall kind of played it conservatively to kick a field goal to win the game and so your kicker comes on and kick is up and 8,000 of your fans come pouring onto the field and, and just nuts. And I, I mean, they might have had something to drink. I don't know where they would have got that during, during that whole event in a dry stadium, but they're going crazy. And the referee's waving it wide, wide to, to the left. It was wide, yeah, wide left. And, and, and just the face on they're going, what? It just and they had to pour all these people back into the stands to play the second overtime, and then when they finally got to come out and sell, and it's honestly one of my favorite moments of the, of the nine games that we've done. You know, Jeff, you you mentioned that you, you guys try to treat everybody the right way when they come in, and I know our players appreciated that. They had great experiences there. Our fans had great experiences Thank there. You. But tell about you know the involvement of the community. Yeah. I mean, because it really is a community event. No, all these things are, and, and, and these don't happen without the community. And when it started out, you know, I was working for the governor's office, and that's how we kind of started this bowl game, and then it, 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 there was skepticism, and in our town, it, things don't happen quickly. You know, it, it takes a while, but I think people have bought in, and, and we, you see more corporate support over the last few years. You see more public support in the way of tickets. It, it's now people understand. See, I look at this event not just as a football game. I think it's a quality of life event for Albuquerque and for New Mexico. And I think it's no different than a Blake Shelton concert coming to town or a Broadway play coming to town. You may not go to the Broadway play, but she does or he does. You may not go to the Blake Shelton concert. Same as the bowl game. It's, it's a high-end event for your town that's bringing in 
tangible dollars, great exposure, and it, 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 there's no negatives to it. And I think we're, we're kind of over the hump now with the community. And so they've, they've come on and they've really started to support this thing. And, and it, it is, you know, it, it's, there's pride around it now. And, and you know, I go back to uh, something Joe Glenn said to me the first year, and, and, and I'll say it, I, you know, I'm talking to Wyoming fans, Wyoming should have been in our first game in 2006. Wyoming beat New Mexico in New Mexico, had a better league record than New Mexico. And we took New Mexico, and, and it was the first year getting this thing off the ground. And I've told you this story a number of times. I went into my office on that Saturday morning. Wyoming had, had finished the season. Joe was on the road in Oklahoma going to watch his son play. And I just I sat over the phone, and I, I think I probably called you to get his, his cell number. And I called him, and I said, Joe, I just want you to hear it from me, okay? If New Mexico wins, I'm going to invite them. They're going to be 6-6. Six six. It's our first game here. i got to get this thing off the ground. He said, Jeff, you, you have no idea how much this call means to me. And he says, I understand it. He said, if it was a 72-20 ball, it'd be different. And, and it goes back to the community thing. He, he understood what it meant. And uh, one of the hardest phone calls I ever had to make, he made manageable because of who he was. And, and it's really who the Wyoming people have been. They're just some of the best people I've met in, in, in college athletics, certainly over the last decade doing this. Well, we appreciate it, Jeff. And we we're glad we were able to get there in 09 and 11. And, Welcome and back. Hopefully, hopefully, when are you coming back? Hopefully we'll be back again. <laughs> I thanks, hope so too. Thanks too. for taking the time. Thank you.